Hello all, welcome to AuraTrainings.com. In this session, we'll discuss about how do we enable audit history in Oracle Fusion ERP. So let's get into the content. So the first thing is, how do you enable the audit history? So the navigation for this one is, you can just navigate to setup and maintenance, search for a task called manage audit policies. In the manage audit policies, in the manage audit policies, you could see a task called, you see, you'll see, you'll see the list of functionalities which are available. In the audit policies page, you can see there's something called Oracle Fusion applications. And here, basic first thing what you do is you just make it as auditing and then you click on configure business objects. The first thing you have to do is you have to make it audit level as auditing, click on save. And after that, click on configure business object. Once you click on configure business object, you should be able to navigate to this particular screen. And here you need to select the appropriate product on which you want to enable auditing. So in our session today, we just consider supplier model as the object which we want to configure. So click on supplier model and select the entity and in the actions, you just add them appropriately. So whichever columns or whichever entity you select, that will be considered for audit history. Okay, so this is how we can enable audit. Next thing is, what is like, a, once you enable audit, you want to see what are the changes happening on the table, right? Let us say who created, when it was created, who updated, on which column they updated, when it was deleted, right? So to get that particular audit report, you need a role called FND internal auditor job. You assign this particular role. Once you have this particular role assigned, and you should be able to see a standard report or a standard page which will be available under the tool section. In the tools application, you can see a page called audit reports. Navigate to this particular page, and you can search with a specific date, or you can mention the, you can select the appropriate criteria in the search criteria here, and also select the product on which auditing was enabled. In our, in our particular example, we consider supplier model, so I selected supplier model, and then click on search, and then you can be able to see all the list of changes happened on the supplier model. It can be bank accounts, suppliers, contacts, sites, whatever things on which audit is enabled. You should be able to see the information here, like in, observe here supplier bank account object update and which column update account number and let us say supplier supplier name or uh, supplier name update and the supplier name update and this is the object insert for supplier bank account this new account number was inserted so this is how we can get the information and what ex what what all the information you will generally see here when the change were made who made it and the nature of update added remote or update and what was changed, which column was changed. These are all things you can find it in the audit report. Now, there are a couple of tables in tables we have it. Now, let us say if you observe this audit history report, which is a standard one, it may not suit your requirement. Let us say if at all, if you want to design your own custom report, how do you do it, right? So for that, I'll show you the list of audit reports which are available for the supplier entity. You can find the information of those particular things. So one before before discussing that one, let us say if you want to know the, know whether audit is enabled on a specific standard table or not, you can just navigate to this particular query, FND audit attributes, and here it clearly tells you on which table and which column audit is enabled. You can see the flag here. This is initial auditing table information. And the next the next query which I want to show you is this is a very important one. If at all, if you want to find out the list of supplier tables and the object name of those particular audit history table, you can just search this particular query. It is, and also you can observe here, most of the audit tables will generally end with underscore. One more important thing you have to understand, any table which is ending with underscore doesn't mean it is audit table. But here in this case, the list, this particular list which I am showing here, most of them are audit tables, or I can say all of these particular fire audit tables, okay? and whatever the report which we have seen earlier right in this audit report page all the information will come from this audit history tables only what you can do is you can customize this particular query or nothing but you can write a custom query on this particular objects or this particular tables and build your custom reports to show them in a the way the customer want okay now so what we do is we'll just navigate or we'll try to see the demo now let us say the first thing is we want to find out the audit policies, right? So we'll just navigate to the Fusion ERP instance. So here I'll just go to setup and maintenance. And we'll go with this task, manage audit policies. Click on this one. And here 
the first thing is make sure the auditing is enabled. I go with auditing enabled, click on save. Once this is done, click on configure business object attributes. And here you select the appropriate one. Let us say in our case, we have selected supplier model. I'll just click on that and it shows the information. Just click on this one. And here, if you observe, it shows a list of columns which are already selected for the auditing. Maybe if at all, if you want to select the other entity, let us I'll select this entity. And you can see here, most of them are already selected for the update. So we'll try to see if something is not enabled. We'll just click on that. Yeah. So, so let us say here, if you observe, right, it shows only two columns, right? Consider for the update. So what I'll do is I'll select this one and click on add. And we'll just, yeah. So here, if you observe, there are only two columns considered for update. I mean, for auditing. Let us say I want to consider all the columns which are available in the supplier side third party relationships to be considered for auditing. I have to select them appropriately. Click on OK. Save and close. So once you enable audit, right? So what are the changes which you have done on the specific entity attribute? They will be available in the audit report. Now I'll click on save and close. We'll go back to the, we'll go to the procurement now. I'll just open one more window. Yeah, so I'll just try to go to the procurement supplier application and then we'll see the information procurement suppliers. Let's say I'll search one of the customer, maybe ABC Consulting or whichever comes ABC. Let's say ABC Consulting. I'll click on update. So here I'll go with addresses. I'll try to update this address. And I'll say address line 2. So this is only one update which I want to do here. Address line update. So now what we do is we'll see this information in the audit history. So let us see. How do we find it, right? Click on tools and we should be able to see the audit history. Yeah, audit reports. Yeah, in the tools, click on audit reports. Now here we have a criteria here. Let us say before, right? I'll say before fourth, what are the changes which are done on the supplier model? I would like to get the details, right? Click on search. Yeah, it's executing. And yeah, we can also check the information. Similarly, from the POZ addresses table also. So as we have seen, what was the address for the, yeah, we'll see, yeah, we'll get that. Yeah, you can see here. So maybe it will take some time to show you that information. Yeah. Go and search again. And we can get the information from our audit history table also. I would like to get the addresses table. So what we do is you can just see the yeah, it's not there. Or we can try the other one. Let's say I'd like to consider another one. I'll click on sites. Maybe I'll just click on here, plus symbol, and try to assign a new site. Select the address and click on save as of now. And just see the edit report. Sites all M. Yeah. So this is the audit history table for the supplier sites all M underscore. What I'll do is I'll just so I'll just try to write a query with the order by creation date underscore. And you should be able to see the update here somewhere.
just search for the user John Dunbar. Yeah, I think I will click on save. Yeah, I'll click on save and close. Let's try again. Which we are not able to see it right still. What we can do is let us try on this one ABC Consulting. Let's say updated. I'm just updating the alias name here. Click on save. Let's try again. So I'll just better I'll mention the user. Yeah, you can see here the user John Dunbar updated this ABC consulting. So probably the audit policy was not selected on the specific one which we are trying to select. That's the reason it was not showing, right? So you need to always be very careful on which attributes you have to, you have enabled the audit. Based on that, you'll be getting the result. So I'll just click on search of this user. Username is John. Yeah, this was a user. So I'll search all the changes done by this user. And you can see that a bit here, right? It shows the business object supplier, this one. And maybe I'll try the other one. Maybe I'll try on the supplier contacts. I'll just create one more contact now. Test. Last name. Okay, save and close. In ideal scenario, you should be able to see the result in an instant manner, but yeah, as it is a demo instance, there are chance of delay, or maybe I would have missed enabling audit on a specific table. So as I show, yeah, you can observe here, so this is an insert, right? It's an insert, it's an update. And let us say, I'll try deletion also, if possible. If it allows deletion, yeah, there is no option of deletion. Yeah, let's try to, yeah. Yeah, so if at all delete was there, maybe you should be able to see the event type as a delete as it is not having any delete, only it has end data, right? So you can see here, this object are updated, specific information. So this is how we can monitor the information and it provides the output in Excel or CSV. So if at all, if you are not satisfied with this particular report, as I said you, so the best option is you can just try to design a custom report. Maybe, you know, like as we know the supplier contacts, right? Let us say if at all, you can just get that also. Contacts underscore. We was at supplier. Oh, yeah, so you can see this particular audit history table supplier contacts underscore. We'll try to see whether we should be Whatever we have modified, we should be able to see here. Right now. I'll say this is the contact ID. Yeah, it's not showing any data. Is the table information correct? Yeah, it's correct. Check the access level also. Maybe that is the reason it is not providing the information. But yeah, but ideal scenario, I should provide the information of the audit history. Okay. So this is all about, you know, like how do we enable fusion, like audit history on a supplier. And similarly, it is not just on a supplier, right? So let us say if you're at all, if you want to enable audit history on other module or other product, you can just see them also. Let us try that also. Let's say, click on search manage audit policies and here first thing is auditing you enable here configure business objects and here let us say i'd like to enable on general ledger click on general ledger and then select the appropriate one yeah now here, let us say on the period status right on the period status if at all if you want to enable if you observe right wherever it is selected it is already enabled now let us say on general level i want to do something so now there is nothing selected on general level. I'll select this one and here. Yeah, so see here. 
So these are the things. So these are things which are selected already. Let's say I'll click on plus symbol here. Yeah, so you can let us, I want to select header ID also. Can select it, click on okay, and save and close. So just selecting is not enough. Just selecting this particular thing is not enough. You need to add the attributes also. That is what I want to show here. I'll show you one more here. Let's say historic rates or daily rates. So here, if you observe for daily, when you select daily rates, automatically it has shown the columns, right? And DFFs were not selected. Let us say if you want to under, get that information, yep, select them, save and close. That's it. So the audit will be enabled on that one particular DFF attributes of this general nature. Okay. So this is all about, you know, like uh, enabling audit on a specific product and finding out the information from the base tables or maybe the standard audit report also. Thank you.